Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get the arm to bend and how to do the hands. So um, this is what we should get by the end of it. So you can bend his arms and also here we'll, ha we'll start on the fingers so that they can point out like that or like that. So let's begin. So, start off with, we need to convert, select the arm and right click and convert it to Edible Poly. And in this selection, choose Edge, which is the outline triangle, and select the four lines in the middle. And under Edit Edges, uh, choose the connect button, a little black box beside it, and change the segments to free. And it's up to you how far the pinch is, but I've put it to 60. So it's, it's up to you. But 60 is pretty good. So after you've done that, press OK. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to this vertex selection, which is right beside the edges on the left, just the three dots, and you need to choose the bottom four dots, and maybe in front view if you want, you need to move it up a bit, because the hand has to go somewhere, so, uh, about, about where I put mine should do, we should be able to change it, maybe later, maybe not. So after you've done that, what you're going to want to do is go to modify list and add a skin modifier. And then make sure you note what bones they are. And if you're smart, you should rename them. So you go to tools, rename objects, and name them something. So line left on, and numbered, and rename. So then I can just select the arm and add the bones and find where they are. There. So what you should do now is also animate the second bone in the arm, the one that can bend. And uh, you need to animate it from from 0 to 100, so turn on auto key, go to 100, and using the rotation tool, rotate it in the uh, direction that it should go, 90 degrees, make sure you have angle snap toggle on, and you should start to see some sort of difference. So we go from A to B, see how well it looks, and as you can see it's not the best. Technically works pretty well, actually. But uh, we need to work on the uh, elbow. So to do that, um, you could try and tweak it from here with the end of edit envelopes. But uh, you should try out something new. Um, so go to modify list and choose skin morph. And you're going to want to add the second bone, the one that we've animated to bend. Fine, there it is. And go back to frame zero. And with the bone selected, create morph. And then animate. Uh, go back to 100 and create another morph. And then with this morph, select the one at 100 frames. Uh, click the edit, which is under local properties, and now we can select any of the vertices, even though they're not visible. Uh, select the the ones that are should be about pointy. So just move them to where you think they should be. Um, you may you, you don't have to do this, but you might want to move the vertices up here that are technically hidden in slightly, 
as you might see uh, the faces overlapping. You might not see the faces overlapping as well, so it's up to you to to uh, do that or not. Strange enough, I've never tried it without moving them, but uh, sometimes they do come quite obvious. So you can do that and just make sure you're out of edit before you check what it looks like. You might want to morph it at a certain point, so I'm gonna go to 50 and add another morph. And I'm just gonna go back to edit and maybe move some of these about a bit. It doesn't look as bad, possibly. Unfortunately, for some unknown reason, it does change the other morphs at some point. So you may have to go into the edit mode and change them back slightly and hope it keeps the, uh, the differences. So, what you should, oops, hopefully, you should get a reasonably good bend. Now after you've done that, we should quickly add a smooth just to double check it. So add on the modifier list a smooth and then bend it again and you'll notice that you won't get that weird black overlapping thing. So that will fix that. So you just keep tweaking this so it looks a bit better as a bend. You may want to move these two vertices a bit more at 50. Just to tell they're overlapping quite badly. Which I'll quickly do a bit, but the more you the more you morph at this point for some unknown reason edits how it looks at the other points quite drastically. So you may have to tweak them quite a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the bending. Just a lot of tweaking to get it right and you should get a reasonably good bend and then you just need to add the uh, the texture to it so um, next we'll go on to the hands so get out the skin move thing so if you if you're in points which you might just unclick that so you're not in it so you can select other objects and then you're going to want to go to the create tab and make a box under geometry and you're going to want to change the the length to 10, the width to 10 and the height to 2.5 and then using the align tool uh, align it to the to one of the bones Here's the bottom one is best uh, maybe rotate it at 800, 180 degrees and then be super precise for this or not. I'm just gonna move it up. But it's up to you to so just move that up to the top of the stub of the arm. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the figures now. So to do that we're going to make another box. So create a box. Now I found this to be an easier way to do it than, than to have it start off as long then bend it because it comes very confusing if you're going to use more. If anyone's got a better way of making them turn to another object uh, feel free to leave it in the comments because I'm sure there has to be another way of doing it. It's much less messy. So um, change the length to 2.5 the uh, width to 7.5 and the height is 5 and then using the align tool if you want align it to the palm using center or center if you want you and then rotate it 180 degrees move it up so that just to it you know go into front view by pressing F if you want and P to go back into perspective just move it to position
and yeah, from the side as well. See it. So yeah. After you've done that, you need to create a a box and change the parameters to length five, uh, width two point eight, and height two point nine. Then align it to the other box we just created and move it up. So it's just just after it's after the top one and then select the finger and go to the create tab geometry compound objects pro bowling and start picking and choose the top the the, the square we just created and you should get what technically we have here, which is the very first shape. So once you've done that, um, right click and convert it to an enter poly. And in the selection, choose the vertex and selecting these four, uh, press the connect, which is under edit vertices, and connect them. I do the same with these ones in this corner. So after you've done that, comes the more complicated part of trying to make them into a long finger. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of headaches to do it, but yeah. So right uh, hold shift and move it over. So we get a copy of it. And then you need to start moving all the vertices. Don't add any more vertices or anything. Just edit them and turn them into a into a finger. So the best way I have noticed to do this is to use the snaps toggle option. So turn that on. Maybe you need to right click it. Uh, I believe default is grid points. So untick that and turn on vertex. This makes it so that we can position it wherever a vertex is. So I need to move these 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 vertexes up to the same length and to that. So to do that, I need to just I could just hold in the z-axis up, and as you can see, it's it's gone all mad now. But if I point it at the vertexes here, it goes perfectly in line to it. So that's pretty much what you need to do. You need to you need to really try and get these into some sort of position which is not going to be easy but yeah that's pretty much all you need to do so make sure you don't position on every axis so you can if you want though if you want to perfectly position on that vertex and not just in a certain position, you can just put this little circle on the middle and it will move it in every position in that direction. So, I'm just going to move it there and then I'm going to move it down and yay, there we go, we've got a finger. But it'll be probably harder for you because I've already done it once, but after you've done that, uh, you may want to uh, space out the vertices, but you shouldn't have to. So after you've done that, reselect the uh, thing we cut out and on the modify list, add a morpher uh, at the morpher and under channel parameters pick object from scene and choose the finger and yes it looks weird as it transforms into it but the plan is that it will go from A to B instantly instead of going and transitioning to it which would look strange so yeah and you can do another finger if you want like this one here if you want to. Uh, I found it's much easier to just morph it about where you think you'd probably want to use that. So I'm going to say that and just then hold down shift and move it oops, turn off not snap toggle and just move it over 
with that shape and just convert it to an editable poly and then edit those vertices that way so uh... let's see about oops Ooh. I accidentally picked it too so yeah just move those where you think they should be You know, keep editing it until you think you've got it right, and then of course click on another empty slot here, and then start picking and add that. So you could try that out. You know, you might want to make yours look a lot nicer than mine. Mm, this one actually came out pretty well on that finger, but yeah. So there's another one. So what you can want to do now you've got all those shapes done is make sure you got everything correctly. First, we're going to use the vertex tool again because it's actually quite useful for aligning things as well. So, under hierarchy, change it to effect pivot only. So, click that, turn on snap toggle, and position it on the y axis to that vertice on that side, on the left side. So, after you've done that, turn off effect pivot only, and then we're going to hold down shift and we're going to move it. So, as you can see, as it's on that pivot, it could be perfectly aligned to the other one. Now I'd say number of copies, but for some unknown reason it will make it go in a diagonal direction. So just do it one by one. And then what you're going to do is uh, hold down shift and rotate it. But yeah, do this after you've definitely done all the other, all of the morphing for the fingers. Because we're not going to instance it because that will just make it more. Complicated. Although you could actually, that would make more sense. It's it's up to you. But yeah, just position the thumb. So just rotate it and you just position it like you do. Yeah, and just move it in. It should fit in pretty well. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. We'll just hold down shift on all these, or hold, hold down control on all these and using the link constraint tool which is up in the top the chain icon, it's right underneath the green logo of Autodesk choose that and you're having them select a drag to the palm of this and then to the little little bone there so now what you should have is it bends and it has a fist for it as well and you can make a point which looks pretty well. Although if you had all of these out, it does look weird, but I think that's that's always going to look like that, and I don't think there's a way of fixing it. So it looks a bit weird, but that, that's normal. I don't think any of the rigs don't look like that when you do it. But yeah. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. So uh, in the next tutorial, we'll, we'll link these up onto the control panel, um, maybe a bit this of the uh, texturing, but I've gone through that on every single one of my tutorials for that. But anyway, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got a question, leave it in the comments, and I'll try and try and answer it. If you like the video, like it, subscribe, share it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. So um, thanks for watching.